by the end of the the run, and we, you know, we're, we're now we're talking ten years. You know, this show statistically had gone on longer than I think they said, like sixty-five percent of the real marriages in this country. This show had gone on. Um, again, I had reached a point where I had very little to give. You know, I every idea I, I hear, I've heard before. I found myself going, didn't didn't we do that? You know, we did. We wound up doing what was it, two hundred fifty something episodes. You know, of this show, we were, and you know, there was just the, I, I. You know, I had very little else. I wanted to to move on to again something else. You know, if I was going to continue to do this, um, a show that I'm, I don't know whether we plan to talk about, but. There was a g group that sort of morphed out of Married with Children called No Ma'am. This was a group of Al's friends who met, they were his social club. They would basically meet in his garage weekly and rail against women and how, you know, the country was now ruined because of feminism and, you know, there's nothing else in there. They've infiltrated everything we like and, you know, and, 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 and it's just terrible, and the earth is, you know, and, and, and you know, they a harmless bunch of guys that would sort of sit in the room, in the garage, drink beer, pretend to go through Robert's Rules of Order, you know, the, you know and now uh, Mr. Someone will, sh will speak, and he'll talk about his wife. My wife watched uh, an episode of Oprah, and now she thinks that, you know, I should bring her flowers and, you know, look, look, what, look what Oprah has done. We have to go and do something to Oprah. And they would talk and then, oh, hey, the game's on. And that's pretty much how the meeting would end. I wanted to spin this group of guys off because I thought that, this, th that, that these were a very, very f funny, first of all, very, very funny group of guys. And I was actually planning to give them just a little bit, more steam in that they would try to affect change. And I wanted to spin them off in that when a guy was clearly headed for trouble, they would be the intervention. When you would see the 50-year-old banker that decided, I'm going, yes, I really do love the 19-year-old Hooters girl, and we're going to be married. I, am, I haven't told my wife that I'm leaving her yet, but uh, we're, we're going to that these guys would actually come in, even if they had to black bag him and drag him, you know, from, that would actually do, in, in order to save not only men, but mankind. Um, and just a bunch of near to wells who'd almost always wind up in the lockup by the time this was over. Um, the No Ma'am group on Married got an incredible amount of fan mail when we started doing this. We had No Ma'am shirts, and, and No Ma'am stood for the National, National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. And we had No Ma'am shirts. We had, and they're, they're, to this day, if you Google it, you will see No Ma'am clubs to this day, you know, um, the people that get together. We wanted to spin that off and have a great deal of fun with it. You know, on Married Al, of course, was the president of No Man. We were either going to cast another president or you know, maybe use Jefferson or whatever. Just anything, again, to inject life into this without having to bring in a kid. You know, we thought we'd bring in a social club. And we pitched this to Fox, and they were horrified. Now, again, now political correctness had a firm grip on the nation, and we kind of knew that, but they were absolutely horrified, you know, at this. Um, not that I haven't been used to being, having an idea turned down, but the look on their faces when that, the fact that somebody would even bring this up at all to them. I guess they hadn't been watching Married with Children, because this group had been on Married with Children for two years, <laughs> but that this would even be brought to their attention. That told me, 
you know, my time, my time in the industry, uh, my time here is done. Really is done. Because I can't, I can compete with a lot of things. I cannot compete with political correctness. I, 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 I just can't. First of all, I have no desire to. And secondly, I can't win that. You know, I can't write a sitcom or any type of comedy if I now have to factor in that this just may offend someone because I've always thought by its very nature, comedy has to kind of be slightly offensive. Doesn't have to be mean-spirited. You don't sit there and just tear down someone. But from, again, Laurel and Hardy, you know, if they're going to turn, I don't know, a, a, a dog loose at one of these highfalutin parties and chase them around, you know, to see, you know, a fat woman in a tight dress slip and fall and land butt first into a cake. That's kind of, all right, you know, that, that's, a, that, that's, all right. We're, but you don't expect, you know, a group the next day that represents overweight women to write in and just say, you know, why are you always making fun? And the network saying, you know what, we can't do this anymore. You know, over this is a disease. Don't you don't you people understand that these women, you know, they can't help this. They, this is a disease, and you're making fun, and you're really tearing down their self esteem. Well, every single group you can do that, and if you make fun, well, I, you know, I guess rich conservative white re Republicans are still fair game, <laughs> but but every other single group in the world, I, you know, if we can't do anything, can't do jokes, then. You know, I, I don't have any reason to be here. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm just slowing up traffic for the guy behind me. And once the reaction to no ma'am, not that, again, not that it was turned down, but the reaction to it seemed to be, I don't even know where I am anymore. And sure enough, I, I'm, I'm thinking that this is the death knell for comedy, and sure enough, if you look at what comedy has become most of the time, you know, I don't regret this for a second. I not for a second, because with very few exceptions, you know, I, I, anybody see the whole lot of funny going on? You know, I, you know, I don't. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, the the major reason not didn't have to do with reality TV. A lot of people thought that I saw that. I didn't see that coming. To the, I, you know, how can you see that coming? <laughs> you know? But the fact that now you had to kind of write comedy by the book, you know, you can't, you know, the gay, a gay character always has to be smarter than a heterosexual character. You know, a white woman has to be smarter than a white man. You know, a black woman has to be smarter. It's just... You know, you can't do a joke, you know, if you, so you can't do a drinking joke. You can't do an overeating joke. You can't do this because you want to offend that. And then, you know, this group is all oh, handicapped. You can't, uh, you can't do it. He's in a wheelchair. You can't, you know. And finally, it's like, well, okay, see ya.